Welcome everyone to Off Air with Christy Cable. I have a legend in the house. Campy Russell uh, from the Cavaliers are with me. Campy is a legend. He was selected. I have to give your your brow because I know he will not talk about any of this or brag on himself. He was selected by the Cavs in the first round of the NBA draft. Former All American. Today he works in the Cavs front office as director of alumni relations and co host of the Cavaliers pregame and postgame show, which you have to watch, and remains one of the Cavs' most popular players. So, welcome again, Campy Russell, to our show. Uh, this is fun. He actually just came off the set from Fox 8 News in the morning. Yeah. We always say we want more time with our awesome guests. And so that's where the podcast comes in. So, Thank you for spending a little extra time with Christy, us. Christy, thank you very much for allowing me to be a part of your uh, podcast. Yes. I know it's going to be very popular. I love you. I know it's popular. You will now be on the intro for every <laughs> show for that. Um, let's talk about your job with Director of Alumni Relations, which we were talking about on the show today. Yep. You really bring that past and present together and how you are and how everyone loves you. Um, it's really a great relationship yeah, with well, past players. Well, you know, I think it's important for there to be a relationship, you know, from the guys that have come even before me, as well as to be a part of the guys that are currently mm-hmm. a part of the people have this organization, because that helps weave the fabric of this organization when you have that connection from all of those guys. So that is why um, the Legends program, Cleveland Cabinet Legends program came about because our owner wanted to make sure that we were not going to leave anybody behind. It's a family. As it relates, exactly. Yeah. As it relates to former players, to current players. And I, I think that's a beautiful thing. And talk about the current project with the Wall of Honor, a uh, camping inductee back in 2022. So it's it's a huge honor. It's something that is, it's up. And where can you locate it when you go to the arena? Well, first of all, it is located on the main level in the North Atrium. Yeah, it's a beautiful. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful wall that has these plaques on there. Each, each player has uh, two plaques: one with their with their face and the time they play, and then the other one has all their history in terms of uh, you know what they've done throughout mm-hmm. their careers and that type of thing. But it's a uh, it, it's a beautiful thing. It was something that was definitely needed because when you look at it, you know there's some guys who are who have had their jerseys retired, mm-hmm. but then there's a lot of other guys who have come who have been around who has impacted this organization as well. So I think that all around us speaks to that. Yeah. You know, allow us to induct other guys who have been uh, uh, great producers for this Cavalier team as well as being great community guys for this Cavalier team just for being, in some cases, just being a great person. Yes. You know, I think that's really important. Which is important to know about a lot of people who don't know a lot about players. Yes. You know, or yeah. celebrities, you know, off the court and the good things that they do in the community. And I think it needs to be recognized. And I think that's crucial, you know, because again, um, I know when I was first coming to Cleveland, I, I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And uh, one, I had a conversation with my dad about this. Um, and he was telling me at that time, he said, Campy, the only thing you can do is go there and be a part of your community. Mm-hmm. You know, don't try to stand yourself off, uh, but be a part of it. And that's the thing that I've uh, always kept in front of me as it relates to me being here in Cleveland or being anywhere. Yeah. You can be a, be a part of wherever you are. Because the younger generation is very important. And I know that's been a passion of yours as well. And these little kids, they need these big star basketball players that they look up to, right? Yes. And they want to be them when they grow up and go to all the camps, camps, and, and you know what I mean? Yeah, and so yeah. it's it's a huge deal for, and players need to remember that, that these little kids are really looking up to them, not just yeah. on the court, but I think off the court too. Well, I think that's the thing about being an athlete or being anybody yes. for the most part is that you have to understand and there's always somebody watching mm-hmm. and you never know who you're going to impact. So it's always, you know, I think the best thing you can do is just be as positive as you possibly can be. Even though I understand some people are not like that yes. <laughs> in terms of being positive. <laughs> but for the most part, I just think you have to, you know, make, be approachable. Yeah. You know, and feel like someone can walk up to you and say, hey, Campy, how you doing? Yeah. You know, and and not for me, I, I like that because. It speaks to one, they weren't afraid to come up to me, mm-hmm. but at the same time, I will always respond to them in kind. Yes. And I think that goes a long way. And, into- and I have to echo that because that's all I heard before. I never met Campy until today. They're, He's the nicest guy, Wayne and Stephanie. He's the nicest guy you'll ever meet. So I just want you to know that that 
stretches very far. But Campy was a little guy too. <laughs> and so he, I have to go back to your childhood. Um, one of 10 yeah. siblings. Seven boys which, and three girls. Yes. And so I can't imagine what things were like. I had two brothers who played sports and it was always someone who's wrestling somebody or throwing Nintendo controllers or playing baseball in the house and well, the walls. <laughs> Holes in the wall. Chrissy, the way I can explain this is that this is this. We had a house that my dad um, bought, um, and it was a house that had two bedroom, a basement, and an attic, and one bathroom. And you had seven boys and three girls, and there was always some cousins or someone that was there at the house. Sure. Right? <laughs> so you could not have disorder. You had to have order. Right. And my mom and dad had, right, right. They had order in the house. Yes. So that went a long way in terms of, I, I would say, develop all of us as uh, as people and, and, and just putting us in a situation where you always remain humble mm -hmm. and you always will be uh, a part of wherever you go. And, uh, you know, those were just great lessons for me. Yeah. Uh, but they did a great job of commanding house yes yes <laughs> which is a lesson for all yes. of us <laughs> parents uh, who have children um but i don't know what your parents are feeding you guys we had talked about <laughs> she also had us two brothers that played ball mm -hmm. as well and then obviously can't be success so a very talented family your brothers yeah. played for who yeah I, well i had three brothers that played uh, well there was three of us three russells that played in the league uh -huh. my older brother frank russell uh played with the chicago bulls uh, he went to the University of Detroit. Uh, my younger brother, uh, Walker D. Russell, Walker Dwayne Russell. Uh, he played. He went to Western Michigan, and uh, he played with the Atlanta Hawks, played Detroit Pistons, as well as the Indiana Pacers, and he's currently uh, a scout for the uh, Dallas Mavericks. So he is still in the in the league and doing uh, doing well. He and his family. And then there was me yeah. who uh, went to Michigan and I know boo. I know. I, know. <laughs> but, uh, I did read that. I did write it down. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I, I was drafted by the Cavaliers back in 74 and um, came came to Cleveland with two great guys that came at the same time. Jim Chums, uh, who was at Marquette, um, and he's been inducted uh, this year as well. Uh, Fitz Walker. Mm -hmm. um, we have all been friends for some mm -hmm. ooh, 45 years yeah, or more, you know, so I think that speaks volumes to the those guys, but as well as to the people that we all are. Yes. And talk about life in the NBA. And you said you went to the University of Michigan. They got drafted. How did life change so quickly? Like what what is it behind the scenes, as they say, for us here in TV or in the life of a national uh, basketball player in the NBA. And well, I think how we all, change quickly. Well, I, I think we all have different journeys in that regard. Yes. I think it goes back to number one, who you are, and, and in terms of how you going to approach this. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. being a college basketball player to sign a basketball contract that you're making some money, pretty good money from, and now are you going to change? And then how much are you going to change? And to me, I think it was always a situation of trying to stay uh, grounded because I think that is the way uh, I was brought up. In fact, I know that's the way I was brought up, was to always be grounded in all situations. And uh, and so um, that's why I pride myself in. And I think it goes back to uh, my mom and dad yes. in terms of how they brought us up and um, you know just how we lived and how there was so much order. Yeah, and I didn't mention earlier. Well, then you become an athlete, and there's got to be order on the team, right? Right. Oh, it's always it's very natural. It's always good. yeah. Uh, but I, I just want to dial back a little bit here. I know you asked about uh, what did my dad I and mean, my mom and feed us, and uh, <laughs> yeah, say this, you know, on that piece of property that my dad bought yeah. on that little house on the grounds, and I think he bought the property just because of what was on the grounds, and there was like apple trees, peach trees, cherry trees, grapes. Uh, pears. I mean, some of all the fruit that you wanted was right there on this piece of property. And then he went out there and plowed up a lot of the, the earth around the house and put in their gardens. So that he did this for the, what, all the time. That's how I came up. That is what. Do you still eat like that? Do you have a garden I, here? I don't have a garden, but I try to continue <laughs> to eat the way my dad them yeah. taught us how to eat. 
That's so cool. That's so cool. Let's talk about uh, playing for the Cavs. I'm going to steal Wayne Dawson's question. Okay. Um, he had asked you on the air today <laughs> about who your favorite yes. uh, player was that you played with. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to ask you who you played against. Okay. <laughs> so who you played with, you, you had talked about that. Well, you know, And that forms that relationship, that bonding relationship through the years. I, I mean, then, Chrissy, there, there's so many guys that I can name, but... I, I I always think of Nate Thurman in my mind, uh, a guy who came to, into my life, almost here into my life, into our basketball team life that changed the fabric of our team uh, and how, how he impacted the team from his ability to rebound the ball, block shots, and just command the game. But more importantly, his ability to communicate to us what it was going to take for us to be a good basketball right. team. I think that was the thing that stood out for me uh, all together. Then the second person would be, for me, would be uh, Fritz Walker. Okay. Fritz Walker and I came together. Uh, he was our number one draft choice. He was the second draft choice. And we hit it all right away. And to this day, we are still this way. Mm-hmm. So, you know, those those guys, uh, those two guys really stand out. Uh, but again, you know, I know somebody may say, well, hey, you're missing a lot of guys. Yes, I am. Yeah. Because those are the kind of relationships that I've had with <laughs> any teammate that I have. You know, whether it's Austin Carr, whether it's Jim Jones, uh, Roland Garrett, you know, Jim Clemens. I mean, Bingo Smith. Yeah. You know, another guy who really impacted uh, my life and our team. So there, there's just so many guys. So it's hard to just say one. But. If I had the same one, it would be Nate. Oh, it's a podcast, but you're talking about, you're talking about whoever you want. Now, who do you played against? Well, when I say play against, when you say play against, I mean, I played against all some of the toughest guys yes. that ever played basketball. And these know? were the years of? Uh, 74 to 84. Um, I played against Larry Bird, obviously, Bernard Key. Uh, I played with two guys in New York. Uh, that I believe was one of the two top guards in the league, mm-hmm. uh, Michael Ray Richardson and Ray Williams. Uh, I played with them for three years in New York, and uh, uh, those guys were just spectacular. I mean, they were outstanding players. Um, you know, it's just... How did you guys prepare uh, for playing, you know? Playing the Knicks. Yeah, playing for some the of those, or Larry Bird, well, well, or... Well, you know, I Would think, you switch it up in the locker room, or what was no, talks no, like? No, I just, you know, back in the day, you had to guard your position. Okay. Meaning that if you were the center, you guarded the center. If so did you play man-to-man or zone? Man-to-man. It was oh, okay. There was no such thing as zone. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, that was something that they did not allow to happen. Now, why is that? Well, they wanted the game to be more fluid and in some cases be more physical at the same time. Uh, but uh, that's just what the rules were. And like anything else, you have to play with whatever the rules are. Yeah, like. those <laughs> referees. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but but Campy, he was a complete player. So and that's what, they feel. that's what he was. He filled the lane. I had to write this stuff down. Um, triggered a fast break. Uh, you played tight defense. So that was, was that your style? Uh, well, I, I think when I look at my style, I look at a person that came up doing everything. In high school, I was a center. Um, but I always knew how to dribble the ball yeah. and pass the ball. I always had great vision uh, on the floor. And um, uh, my skill set was just tailored for playing the game of basketball and playing the way yeah. way and playing with uh, a lot of skill sets of passing, shooting, dribbling, defending, rebounding, uh, you know, just having a good understanding of the game. Can't be 6'8", too. And yes, yes. So not really, obviously, the good rebound. And the, 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 he's fat. You were fast, yes. too. And, and the ability to play multiple multiple positions. Because yeah. I played guard. I played the two guard. I played the power forward. I played the small forward. So it was just, I was just blessed to have those kind of talents. And um, and it, it, it all served me very well. And speaking of those talents, and, and we talked about young kids looking up to you, what are some of the things that you worked on to get to the NBA? Like, were you one of those kids in the driveway that would just shoot for hours or have to make a certain amount of shots before you went inside for dinner? Like, how? I think, Christy, my everything took off for me when I started going to Dave Bing's basketball camp in the Poconos. Really? Uh, and that started in my, I think I was in the seventh grade. And that's when everything kind of took off yeah. because I went to this camp and got fine tuned, as I always called it, mm-hmm. because I was exposed to all the fundamentals as it relates to basketball. 
And because I had those fundamentals, I worked on those fundamentals. They were a part of my life. They were part of what I did every single day. Right. You know, so it definitely helped me. And then as I started growing, it gave me a whole different perspective by having all those skill sets. And now here I am, 6'8", which most of the time, that tall back in the day, you played the center position, right. which I did play the center. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I could still do all those other things. And I think a lot of that just had to do with that camp and the fact that um, I was consistent mm-hmm. at working out and doing the things that I needed to do. You know, it's interesting that you said seventh grade, just because nowadays with travel teams that my kid better be the star player in preschool because if not somebody's going down right and so yes, it's yes, like yes. the pressure on yeah. kids these yeah. days and even i like i grew up in an athletic family my son can be my brother's playing ball my husband played football like it was it's just mm. ingrained in our brains and now like my little first grader duke is seven years old i'm like what sport are you playing and he's like i don't know soccer anymore like you you need to play something right and so i think that we we think we have to start them so young my husband goes i didn't really start playing football till like eighth or ninth grade mm-hmm. right. and then he went on to play uh arena football yeah, yeah. and stuff so i like, agree with that i agree with what he just said though, because to me you gotta let them kind of feel the, their way into yeah. it you know you can't be I want you to be this. I want you to be that. No, just let right. them feel their way into it because I think it would be, I think they would be more connected to it because they have chosen their path. And I think sometimes, you know, as family members or as a child, we think well, we have to direct them in that path. Yeah. But I think all you have to do is just expose it to them. Just put them out there. Let yeah. them pick yeah. that route that they want to go. I yeah. think that would be the, the best way to go about it. But camps are so important, too. Yes, we is. just had the Guardians on yesterday, and, and they had summer camps going on. It's like, camps are important. You get yeah. that relationship with coaches, and you learn away from your parents. <laughs> yes, more you <know>? importantly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just learn the fundamentals yeah. of the sport. Yeah, and I, and I think that's important. That's to learn the fundamentals. And I think fundamentals is everything in whatever you do. Yeah. I mean, even in what you do, the yeah. fundamentals that you have to uh, adhere to. So. Um, sports is not anything different. Yeah. And this isn't much different for Campy either because he, you are on TV as well. You do the pregame and postgame show yeah. for the Cavs. And so did you ever think you wanted to get in <laughs> to the television aspect and talking about the game? <laughs> no, you know, and, and it never crossed my mind. And I tell people this all the time is that as a, as a, as a kid, um, I used to study so badly that I didn't even want to talk. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. I mean, this went on for a long time. I didn't want to talk, you know, because wow. I stuttered. And, you know, back in the day, you know, how kids could be so oh. old to you. Yep, but, that hasn't uh, changed. Yeah, that's true. But uh, that was what my issue was. But as I grew and, and matured mm-hmm. and understood and just kind of uh, became more comfortable, I'm going to say, with myself. I think I came out of that, yeah. but I still you know, stutter from time to time. But which I uh, haven't heard once. But it's just one of those things that yeah. uh, you have to work with and be uh, conscious of, and, and yeah. just try to work through it. And but never in my wildest dream, and I tell people this all the time, that I would ever thought that I would be doing television and in front of a lot of people, yeah, and trying to communicate something to them because of. The road, my journey, yeah, the journey that Everybody I'm has at. a story, yeah, exactly. Yes. So, uh, what's your favorite part about the pregame and postgame? He did, Campy does a great job. Um, the with- favorite thing for me was two things. One was Jeff Phelps, yeah, a guy who really helped me understand how to do what is necessary to. Before with that. What's the prep work like? Obviously, well, watching the, the game, just, you know the it's game. more about just kind of, uh, you know, just for me, it's been more about talking about what I see yeah. and what I know. And because of that, I think it's easier for me to do it. Uh, but, uh, you know, Jeff played a big part in that. And now Kaylee Griffin, she has played an outstanding uh, part in that as well because she has allowed me to be comfortable in, in my skin and she's you know, she's just really good at what she yeah, does. Yeah, you guys all work great together. And and it's about the team yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. It's always about team. Yes, that's how <laughs> we are on the morning and, show. Exactly. I was like, how are you guys so successful? I'm like, it's just the crew, yeah. right? If we the all connection. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the Cavs um, and um, what we're expecting is we head into playoffs here uh, soon. And, um, you know. Chris, you don't get too far down the road. Yeah, no, let's start. Okay, what do we let's do? Let's finish up the regular season. You know, let's finish up the regular season. Let's finish up the regular season. Let's finish up the regular season. Let's finish up the yeah. yeah, which is so- yeah, let's just focus yes. on that. You know, right. let's just work on staying healthy. Let's work on getting guys back. Staying healthy, you know? and well, staying healthy yeah. is just you know sometimes just luck and draw. But at the yeah. same time, uh, the beauty of it to me is the fact that we have a lot of guys that can step in from a next man up perspective, and I think that's the beauty mm-hmm. of our team is that. You know, uh, Kobe Offman and uh, our coach, uh, J.B. Bickerstaff, have done a great job of understanding what they needed. And they went out and got it. And now we have a very good starting unit. We have guys coming off the bench who are supporting the team. We have guys that are selfless. We are we have guys that are willing to do whatever necessary to help this team win. And when you have those kind of ingredients and you have good relationships mm-hmm. among, among the, your teammates, it puts you in the position to uh, be successful yeah. in a lot of different areas. We got some great shooters. Yes. We can just oh, my that's God. That, well, that's what we do. We, we're a three-point shooting team. Yeah. Uh, we have two very mobile uh, uh, big men in terms of uh, J.A., uh, Jared Allen. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and Jared has done a great job. And then you look at Evan Mobley, who continues to get better and better. Uh, and the thing I say about him every time I talk about him, he is the guy that impact winning. A yes. lot of people look for him to score a lot of points, get a lot of rebounds, and do a lot of different things. Yes, he could do all that. Right. But the thing that that Evan brings to this team is a guy that is a winner. He has won in every level he's been in, and I believe that he's going to put this team in position, along with the rest of his teammates, mm-hmm. to be winners as well. Yes. Yeah. But we got to work together. Oh, it's all about the work. Said. It's all about the uh, work. Director of Alumni Relations, as we wrap up, I mean, that has been your passion right now. Yes. And so um, as you continue working on that, what do you guys look forward to the future? Well, you know, as a uh, as a group uh, of alumni and the local guys, uh, Larry Nance, Jim Charles, yeah. all those guys, uh, our commitment is to continue to be visible here in this community, uh, to be impactful uh, in this community to continue to uh, be a part of the Cleveland Cavs organization and the fabric. Uh, I think in doing all those things, I think it puts everybody in a good position to succeed, you know, whether it's me personally or, or, or the legends personally or the community, uh, the organization. I mean, it just puts everybody in a good position. To yeah. Succeed. Well, it's been fun to watch and fun for the Cavs. Wall of Honor, obviously, congratulations to you. Thank you. All the new alumni for 2024 is exciting as well. So thanks for coming to Fox 8 and coming on my show, too. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you for allowing me to be a part of your show as well. And I didn't know we had a, 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 some mutual things in terms of being, uh, my my experiences in the Poconos yes. and you. I worked there in Scranton. So. It was like, it's crazy. <laughs> it's so fun when you get to kind of connect the dots and somebody who you just met. I worked in TV there and. <laughs> and he was going there for years and years yes, and years. Yes, and all the polka dots, the skiing, and the all oh, sorts of fun stuff. So it was fun to catch up with you. Thank you. Cats legend, Campy Russell. Bye, everybody. Bye.